Pac-Man Championship Edition, released in 2007, is the purest evolution of the original Pac-Man that was originally released in the year 1980. But to understand why this is true, we must look at the original Pac-Man. At its core, the original Pac-Man is a game about being chased. The four different ghosts, Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde, each have their own distinct personality that dictated how they would chase Pac-Man. Blinky directly pursues Pac-Man, usually falling directly behind him, and becomes faster as Pac-Man eats more pellets. Pinky attempts to ambush Pac-Man, trapping Pac-Man by targeting a couple spaces ahead of Pac-Man's current position. Inky attempts to circle around in front of Pac-Man using a combination of Blinky's position and a small space ahead of Pac-Man, and this generally makes Inky the hardest ghost to predict. Clyde usually chases Pac-Man in the same manner as Blinky, but upon getting within a certain distance, we run away from Pac-Man. The AI behind the ghost of Pac-Man helps to facilitate the cat and mouse back and forth power dynamic within the game. The ghosts in the game have three major states of being that keeps things feeling dynamic. These states being the chase mode, scatter mode, and frightened mode. In regular play, the ghost and Pac-Man regularly switch between chase mode and scatter mode, attacking in waves. This balance of having the ghost relentlessly pursue you one moment and then later back off for a bit keeps you on your toes without overwhelming you. As the game goes on, the time ghosts spend in scatter mode decreases, ramping the tension up until the ghosts remain perpetually in chase mode for the remainder of the game. But as a way to alleviate the tension even further beyond just scatter mode, Pac-Man has the ability to eat power pellets and turn the time against ghosts by putting them in frightened mode. This short duration of power, inspired by Popeye's iconic strength giving spinach, is a large part of what makes Pac-Man's gameplay so compelling. The period of power decreases as the game goes on until it no longer keeps you safe, but during the earlier moments in the game when it's in play, it serves as a wonderful pace breaker in a tense moment, and it's something that can wisely be taken advantage of by smart players. The closely linked comical Tom and Jerry-esque relationship between Pac-Man and the Ghost is what makes Pac-Man special. Pac-Man Championship Edition, a follow-up that was released 27 years after the original, retains this vital element of cat and mouse, and in many ways, is true to the spirit of the original Pac-Man than its modern sequels. Pac-Man Championship Edition DX and Pac-Man Championship Edition 2. A man by the name of Tadashi Aguchi led the development of Pac-Man Championship Edition as the director of the project. In an interview with Gama Sutra in 2008, he said, I think one of the major reasons why Pac-Man is still a very good game and a very compelling experience is the whole tag aspect between Pac-Man and the ghost. Running away, but then also chasing them, and the whole give and take of the experience, and the interaction between Pac-Man and the ghost. I thought that for Pac-Man Championship Edition, what I really need to focus on was the experience between Pac-Man and the ghost, and trying to bring that same fun experience to Pac-Man Championship Edition. Looking at evolving the core structure of the original game without adding gimmicks like many of the other sequels to Pac-Man was important to the small development team behind the game. In fact, to ensure the core of the game was true to the original Pac-Man, Toru Iwatani, the creator of Pac-Man, was responsible for the game design for Pac-Man Championship Edition. This would be the last game Iwatani would ever work on, and as such, he was consulted heavily, with many of the game ideas proposed by director Gucci and the team being approved first by Iwatani. Notably, Iwatani designed the original Pac-Man as a simple, inclusive game that could be enjoyed by all demographics. This aspect of appeal of the original was something the new team was eager to keep for this new game and the subsequent titles that followed. And the game that results from this focus on the fundamentals is a game that actually doesn't change too much at all about the original except the maze design and the speed of the game. Each half of a maze seamlessly phases out and transforms into a new one after eating all the pellets and fruit instead of statically transitioning to a new maze like older Pac-Man games. Also, instead of having you play the game indefinitely, a time limit has been added to create a sense of urgency to the chase dynamic. This added tension is aided by the fact that the better you perform, the faster Pac-Man and the ghost will move in this short time limit. These seemingly simple changes to the core formula of Pac-Man majorly enhance the back and forth nature of the game. Pac-Man Championship Edition is a game about manipulating enemy behavior at increasingly fast speeds under the stress of a timer. At any given moment, you're thinking about which path you should take to efficiently eat the pellets, how you should use the few power pellets available in the maze, which paths are the ghosts going to take based off their individual behaviors, whether or not you should focus on eating ghosts or eating pellets when the ghosts are in frightened mode, and if you do choose to eat ghosts, is it worth the cost of putting them back on the field faster through eating them? These thought processes recur over and over again to the point where you're often thinking of all these things at the same time as the game gets faster and the countdown winds down. Pac-Man Championship Edition is a game that much like the original is very challenging, it's actually somewhat surprising how relentless and aggressive the ghost can get. Whatever bugs the ghosts in the original game had in terms of their behavior that could be abused, such as the ghosts not directly targeting Pac-Man in certain instances, seems to be fixed. 
The feeling of being a weak entity that is being pursued is very well realized in Championship Edition. Every power pellet that is eaten comes with a genuine sense of relief that the chase is on hold and you have the advantage. However, despite this period of relief, its brief nature is always keeping you pressured by encouraging you not to waste the precious few seconds of liberty that could be valuable in clearing an arduous maze filled with pellets or munching on ghosts that could rack up the score. All this culminates to create a game that was able to distill the original Pac-Man to its core and become a legitimate evolution of it. In contrast, Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, the 2010 sequel to Championship Edition, forsakes a lot of the elements that made the original Pac-Man so compelling. This is not to say DX is a bad game, in fact it's a wonderful game in its own right, but at its core it's a pretty different game from the original. This is primarily because Tori Iwatani wasn't involved in the development of this game at all. Director Tadashi Aguchi was given full reign over the title this time, and as such changes were made to the formula. Notably, instead of there being only 4 ghosts, there are also green sleeping ghosts which wake up after being passed by Pac-Man. These green sleeping ghosts pursue Pac-Man after being awakened and form a ghost train of up to 30 ghosts behind it. The addition of the ghost train fundamentally changes the way the game is played from traditional Pac-Man. Ghost behavior across the board became much more predictable, and the 4 main ghosts in particular are much less aggressive than before. This change, in addition with the slow motion that activates when you're close to a ghost to help with split second decisions and the bombs which blast awake all nearby ghosts, makes Pac-Man a much less vulnerable and fragile character than he was in the original and Championship Edition. Oftentimes DX feels less like a difficult game of tug of war, but rather a game where you're the mastermind that constantly has the upper hand and you're merely waiting for your turn to strike back. You have such an absurd control over the easily manipulable ghosts in DX that despite the increased speed across the board, the urgency and tension present in the original and Championship Edition never really manifest at least not to the same level. Power pellets, which were once this fleeting power-up that inspired risk-reward decision-making, now leave Pac-Man powered up for large chunks of time and only encourage him to eat more and more ghosts, rather than the more layered and challenging thought process power pellets used to inspire. In the original and Championship Edition, pellets and power pellets were equally important. Pellets were necessary to clear mazes, but power pellets were useful for making certain sections of mazes easier to clear, and they were also good for increasing the score. Despite the power pellet being a powerful tool in the original and Championship Edition, the cost was its short duration period and the fact that if Pac-Man ate a ghost, the ghost was being put back on the field again as an enemy faster than it would have than if it was kept in frightened mode. In DX, however, while the same basic rules still kind of apply, the well-tuned balance is disrupted by power pellets being easily available. When you got a power pellet in the original and Championship Edition, a choice had to be made about what you should do with the limited amount of time you had in the powered up state. In DX, no such choice has to be made because oftentimes you'll be able to accomplish both eating pellets and eating ghosts at the same time with no consequences. Eat a power pellet in DX and you'll most likely have a lineup of easily accessible and mobile sleeping ghosts ready to eat near the pellet trail you need to follow, which knocks out two birds with one stone. And if that wasn't good enough, these sleeping ghosts contain power pellets which will extend the duration of the power up. Which means the one drawback of eating ghosts, that being putting them back on the playing field faster as an enemy again, is no longer an issue, because as soon as you eat another easily accessible power pellet, they'll be back in frightened mode and will no longer be a threat. I know I've been beating this point down into the ground for a while now, but it's important to note that before, the power pellet created an either-or situation, with consequences for whichever choice you made. It was a decision that was thrust upon you amid seemingly chaotic circumstances. Now it's not, and it's one of the reasons the cat and mouse back and forth isn't really present in this game. The reason for these changes was all in an effort to make Pac-Man into a game that's even more accessible than it already is. In an interview with Aguchi from the Namco Generations newsletter, he said the main focus of the game was to make a more casual Pac-Man that emphasized the fun of running away from ghosts. In order to make the game more accessible, we thought about increasing the number of power pellets. However, the fun of running away from ghosts would be lost. That's where the idea of the ghost train and sleeping ghosts came into being. It started to become a science of removing the right number of power pellets and seeing how many ghosts to add in to keep gameplay balanced. Iguchi designed DX with a certain perspective in mind, that perspective being of someone who hasn't been interested in Pac-Man previously. In an interview with Gamasutra after the release of the first Pac-Man Championship Edition, Iguchi said, When I was a kid, I did play Pac-Man, but I didn't have the Pac-Man fever that everyone else seemed to have. So when I joined Namco, one of my first jobs was to make an arranged Pac-Man title. And while I played Pac-Man, I wasn't addicted to it. I didn't have the love that a fan would have about it. I felt that I could really make a non-Pac-Man lover's game, someone new to the Pac-Man experience. I was looking at the title like those people. So when I was going into development, even when I started working, part of what my job was was to understand why it was fun and why people would want to keep playing it. So when I started making the games, I started realizing, hey, this whole tag and chase interaction between Pac-Man and the ghosts, this is really fun. If we make this increasingly fun for Championship Edition, this is going to get people who have never played Pac-Man or don't really know anything about Pac-Man, like myself, interested in the game. I felt that if I could be interested in the game, as someone who wasn't a hardcore fan, then other people who maybe never played the game before would also be compelled by the game. 
To reiterate this for clarification, Iguchi said this about the first Championship Edition, not DX. However, his ideas for designing a Pac-Man game for non-Pac-Man fans can be seen in full force in DX. While the first Championship Edition was an extension of Iwatani's original game, Championship Edition DX serves as an extension of Iguchi's ideas of accessibility that came about from his lack of prior experience with Pac-Man and through Iwatani's mentorship. There are a lot of deliberate design choices in DX that serve to make it an easier experience to enjoy for newcomers. Examples of this would be bombs getting rid of sleeping ghosts that happen to be in your way in addition to pursuing ghosts, bombs being capable of saving Pac-Man if they're used in one fourth of a second after being caught, allowing players to have the game speed by holding down the bomb button, and making it so ghosts that head your way turn before you collide with them so as to give you an easier time. All these things and more make DX a much easier game than the titles that follows. Interestingly enough though, the 2016 sequel to DX, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2, comes across as a mix of the modern accessibility conventions introduced by DX and the more traditional game of cat and mouse present in the original and Championship Edition. Championship Edition 2 does away with the half maze transformations and the ghost blasting bombs of old, and in its place it has a maze clear system that swiftly transitions to a completely new maze upon completion, like a natural evolution of how it was done in the original, and a bomb jump that sends Pac-Man flying to the starting point. In addition to those changes though, ghosts no longer kill with one touch. Instead, players can bump into them up to two times or less in rapid succession, depending on the difficulty level, before they become aggroed and begin pursuing Pac-Man. Ghost trains also no longer perform behind Pac-Man, but rather behind the four main ghosts. This is notable because the power pellet in the frightened mode period has been changed significantly in this iteration. First off, the power pellet is no longer an easily accessible option for maze clearing like it was in DX, or even just a maze clearing option like it was in the original Championship Edition. Instead, it only appears after certain mazes with a bunch of sleeping ghosts in them have been cleared of a certain amount of pellets. Upon eating the power pellet, the ghost team will begin moving in a frenzy away from Pac-Man, usually following a visible route. Usually. But the only way to get rid of the ghost train is to eat the leader at the front, which would be one of the four main ghosts. This leads to a gameplay loop where you're without any form of respite whatsoever during the actual maze clearing, but upon clearing the maze, you're rewarded with a chance to turn the tables against the ghost. This type of gameplay is actually closer to how the originals back and forth operated, but it's not without its problems, of course. The main issue with Championship Edition 2 is that it feels like it wants to emulate the cat and mouse chase of Pac-Man as a type of spectacle, as if it's putting on a performance that goes through the checklist of all the fun things to do in Pac-Man. I know that the description is a little fluffy and hard to parse through, so let me explain. The power pellet in Championship Edition 2 serves no purpose other than to be there, because it's Pac-Man. All you have to do is look at other Pac-Man games to see this. In the original and Championship Edition, power pellets help clear mazes easier, it lets you eat ghosts that give you points, and it provides a breather that gets ghosts off your back for a while. In DX, power pellets are literally your life and let you clear mazes easily and get points from eating ghosts at the same time for extended periods of time. In Championship Edition 2, power pellets only exist to get you ghost eating points at specifically designated sections. They can't help you during the actual maze clearing, which is usually the meat of a Pac-Man game because they only appear after a maze has been cleared. The pointlessness of the power pellet in comparison to prior entries is made more evident by the fact that there is no consequences to using the powered up state unlike in games prior. In the original, Championship Edition, and DX, the consequences of eating ghosts via the power pellet was them coming back to hunt you quicker than they would have otherwise. Albeit in DX, this consequence was reduced to nothing due to the systems at play. In Championship Edition 2, there is no consequence because the frightened mode power pellet sequence is so far removed from the rest of the game. It's a mandatory, predetermined sequence that's meant to emulate something that was always very dynamic and player driven in past Pac-Man games. The power pellet feels like it was shoved into the game because someone on the development team said, of course Pac-Man needs ghosts, and of course Pac-Man has a back and forth dynamic with these ghosts. We just have to put this in our game to capture that urgency the original had. But what results is something that actually feels kinda half-baked. If you took it out of the game, it wouldn't change a whole lot about Championship Edition 2. Sure, it would lose a lot of the pizzazz and the climax of the experience, but not much else. Another issue is how the ghost trains are dealt with for the most part. They feel like they're only there for the big payoff at the power pellet sections. This claim could be levied at DX as well, but what I stated earlier about the usefulness of the power pellet in that game offsets the issue so it isn't entirely in focus. During the maze clearing sections in Championship Edition 2, the ghost trains only really feel like they're there so you can bump into them and inevitably aggro the ghosts, which leads to far more interesting and exciting chase scenarios. In fact, it may have been a better idea to just get rid of the clutter the ghost trains bring and focus more on the four individual ghosts. Pac-Man Championship Edition and Pac-Man Championship Edition DX represent two different design philosophies from two different generations. Championship Edition is through and through a Toru Iwatani game, with an older design philosophy permeating throughout it. It's simple to play, but hard to master, no holds barred. It's admittedly a little bare bones like older games of yore, in comparison to the content-rich DX in Championship Edition 2. But its core game design is tighter, and the experience is truer to the original Pac-Man. 
In contrast, Pac-Man Championship Edition DX and Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 are through and through Tadashi Aguchi games with a newer design philosophy that is not separate from Iwatani's but rather an evolution of it. DX and Championship Edition 2, to a lesser extent, play into the power fantasy dopamine rush many people typically want in the modern era. It's still simple to play and hard to master, but this time it's a little more accessible. When you get a power pellet in DX, it is a transcendent experience of power that we do not deserve as human beings. The game feel of chomping on a ghost train, the insane controls rumble that accompanies it, and the incredible audio-visual feedback all culminate to make a game that's easy to love. Championship Edition 2's intricate high-speed courses which constantly have you chasing after fruit, power pellets, and ghosts are still exhilarating extremely fun to play through despite the issues I've outlined with it. Are these games true to the spirit of the original Pac-Man? Nah, not really. Are they still amazing? Yes, yes they are. There's merit to both design philosophies that spawn this excellent trilogy of games, and the risks that were taken with the franchise to make them are something I greatly appreciate. The modern Pac-Man titles may not embody all that Pac-Man was originally about, particularly DX and Championship Edition 2. But one thing all the games in the trilogy have in common with the original Pac-Man is that playing them brings about joy.